Maybe getting a little bit older, but I'm definitely in my prime, as is Victrix with their latest model in their Pro Controller lineup. Now, the Prime has a name that might make you think it's the most extreme, flagship, feature-loaded version, but it's actually the opposite. A permanently wired, stripped-down, baseline version that actually carries over a lot of the core Pro Controller features of the wireless versions that are more than double the price. Without further ado, let's check out the Victrix Prime from PDP and compare it to the BFG Wireless for PS5 and Xbox. Xbox series, as well as the one that started it all, the Victrix Gambit, the fastest Xbox controller. Not without an overclock, sweetheart, but we are fun to be overclocking in this video because you know where we are. <laughs> Let's get it. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and molly in the back paddle. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller captain out. The quick disclaimer for my audience, the stallions and stallionettes, this controller was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't paid or told to say anything about it. PDP doesn't get an early preview, so if there's any con shortcomings or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it. So these companies make better products over time. So the question on everybody's rumps, is the Prime the latest and greatest highest end flagship Victrix Pro controller? And it's actually quite the opposite as it is the cheapest way to get into the Victrix lineup from PDP while still maintaining the majority of the key Pro controller features. Although we have regressed to wired, keep in mind the first Victrix controller was a wired bad boy called the Gambit, which was touted as a tournament ready fastest Xbox controller on the market. And that is only on the PC side of the house with an overclock on the Xbox side of the house. It's just a moderately fast controller. But I'd really like to see PDP revise this layout of their website because you actually have to tick three separate boxes to look at the entire Victrix family. Now, I like to keep these brothers and sisters together because guess what? They belong together. PDP has a little offshoot of pro controllers called the Victrix. It's pretty good, pretty goddamn good. And as of extremely recent, I actually covered the news when this acquisition was going down. If you you click on this little tab rooney it's going to take you over to TB or Turtle Beach as they were recently acquired by PDP. So now PDP's got the cheap, real cheap Xbox and Switch controllers, sub $60 joints that are sold brick and mortar stores like Walmart and Best Buy. But now they've got the Turtle Beach Stealth Ultra as well as the Recon and the Reactor, two budget wired Xbox controllers, both of which have been reviewed on the channel. The funny thing is it says most loved over here. It's most loved by the company because that's what they're trying to sell currently. If you come over here, zero reviews. All these other controllers have a four and a half, five stars. So is it really the most loved or is that what you're trying to promote right now? Because that's your latest product. It's fine either way, but maybe just change that to buy me, pick me, pick me. Now, in case you're looking at this and thinking, Kevin, I see seven things there and you've reviewed four controllers from Victrix. That's because a few of these are different colorways or variants of the same controller. For example, this is the PlayStation joint that I reviewed the white version of, and this is a more sassy version of the wireless Xbox version that I've reviewed. Now, of course, anytime a manufacturer has decided to take the wired route as opposed to not being tethered by cable and going wireless, still giving you the option to go wired with a cord if you want, but would you have that wireless technology on board, either Bluetooth or a wireless dongle, usually of the 2.4 gigahertz flavor. But anytime a manufacturer decides to go the wired route, it is because of two reasons. One, not being able to get the wireless manufacturer licensing. That's very common on the PlayStation side of the house. Another very common one is just a cost cutting measure. You don't have to worry about a battery and you don't have to worry about a wireless chipset. And you can swing it, market it as being lagless connection, which of course we're going to test in this video, but also being lighter and not worrying about battery life. Perks of going wired, but not the real reason that these companies are making wired controllers. But now that we've said that, let's read this blurb. When the speed of your input could be the difference between a win and a goddamned loss, you need the world's fastest licensed Xbox controller. Again, that is going to be on the PC side of the house. Eliminate lag. That makes it seem like there's no lag whatsoever. There's always going to be some type of input lag or delay from your mouse, your keyboard, your gaming apparatus. Although with an overclock, controllers on PC can get under one millisecond, usually around that 0.92 mark. Very fucking fast. Another one that stands out to me is going to be endless customizability. This is the least customizable Victrix controller in the lineup because you don't have any of the modular swappable, hot ass droppable parts 
cards, like the fight pad on the two more expensive wireless variants. You do have Dolby Atmos equipped, which means you do get the application unlocked. So you do get that virtual surround. Although in my experience, as somebody that owns a Dolby Atmos soundbar slash surround, it's got two rear speakers and a subwoofer. And I also own a few Dolby Atmos approved headsets. Having a Dolby controller that pushes the feature through the 3.5 millimeter jack, it does sound good and it does give you that virtual surround, although it's not like true Dolby Atmos, which is object-based surround. So unlike a typical channel base 5.1, 7.1, with Dolby Atmos, it is literally hundreds of objects that can be producing their own sound. Footsteps of a grunt off in the distance or wind rustling through the trees, those can be different volumes, different distances, and you don't really get that same sound stage from these Dolby Atmos supported controllers in my personal experience. It is a nice feature to have though. One of the key notable features over here with this gauge absolutely pinned out to redline eight times faster input. That's a big old fucking fat huge claim there. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. They might be onto something that this does have a 1000 hertz polling rate right out of the box. And those stock Xbox controllers do get around 8 milliseconds of input lag or delay on their native consoles due to using Xbox wireless, which isn't the best protocol. It doesn't get interference with other devices in your room, which is cool, but neither does Bluetooth usually. Bluetooth 5.1, like what the DualSense uses, much, much faster. Dual core technology, referring to fast input lag or delay. Fastest input responses. They're really, they're, they're mentioning it a lot, so I'm gonna finna test the shit out of it. And the customization they're talking about is you do have a swappable faceplate, but you do not have the modular pieces like the fight pad. And unfortunately, you cannot swap between the symmetrical PlayStation sticks or offset Xbox layout on the fly. Although I never recommended doing that on the Victrix controllers that you can do that on because it actually puts the thumbsticks closer together than a native PlayStation controller, making them pretty goddamn uncomfortable because you brush your thumbs up against each other like you're kindling a damn fire. And then they have that little stampin' sigil letting you know this is an officially licensed Xbox controller because a bunch of fear and humdrum has been drummed up around the Xbox controller ban of 2023. I know it's 24, but it was 2023 when I covered the news of all that higgity hubbub. Just to reiterate, every single third-party Xbox controller I have on the wall in here, in the living room, tucked away in every nook and cranny and up my fanny, still work perfectly. Sharing my screen once again. Once you came, you shall remain and this diagram over here is not the most useful. It'd be fantastic if you could actually change what's lined up over here so you could actually compare the four different Victrix controllers. That would make the most sense to me as opposed to comparing an $80 Pro controller to all these $30 Nana bought it for you at Walmart and you're mad that you're unboxing it on Christmas looking ass controllers over here. As for the packaging included accessories of the Optimus Prime by PDP, you do have this removable faceplate. It's modular, not really. The only modular parts the front face plate. The other Gambit controllers uh, truly are modular. This is a licensed Xbox accessory, so you have that stamp and sigil as well as lime green trim. If you want to pause to read some of the key features on the back of the box, you may do so right about now. It has been so long since I've unboxed a PDP Victrix controller, but I do recall that they were a little bit more premium than this, which makes sense because this is a $80 controller compared to previously a $100 variant was the cheapest of the Victrix family. You do have your accessory pouch at the bottom, a couple of cutouts to get your controller out of this plastic tray. No laser cut foam or anything, but no big dealio. I'm assuming there's gonna be some accessories under here. God damn, I called it. Got your 10 foot USB-C cable. That's gonna be braided, not microfiber or rubber. It's unfortunately got one of them fat old Tootsie Rolls that do absolutely nothing other than get in the way of cable management. Big old fat block over here. Not the most sensual USB-C cable. It's also pretty heavy and definitely not very flexible. And considering that you're gonna be affixed or tethered with this cable, granted you can bring your own to the party since this is not permanently affixed. And as you can see, this doesn't have any special track or snap-in clip or cut-in. It's just a regular USB-C cable. You know the deal? It's time to peel. And apparently a bunch of other noise. So immediately my initial impressions, this feels substantially cheaper than any of the other Victrix controllers. And that makes sense. It, it, it is cheaper. Included accessory wise, pre-installed, you do have the four rear button option, which I personally prefer, but you do also have a two rear button option. This is incredibly flimsy and you could snap the ever living crap out of this with minimal force or pressure, but just, just don't. Once it's installed in the controller in its little slot, it's not at risk of breaking as easily, but my golly, when it's disconnected, just be careful with her. Keep it in the carrying case. 
These are eight-way or octagonal thumbstick gates, which would be beneficial for fighting games and pretty much only fighting games. Usually you want a full radial wheel around the outside of your thumbstick gates. Pre-installed, you do have two concaved mid-rise thumbsticks, but you do also have a short dome, which is relatively grippy, the rubber or silicone compound that they went with. And then the sniper stick. That's what they've been done calling it on the Victrix, the sniper stick. As you can see, there's a little crosshair right there. I genuinely despise the way that this feels on your fingertip. It's pretty narrow, very reminiscent of the tall and skinny stick of the Elite Series 2, but with a little bit shittier grip and this weird line pattern, which gets worn down very quickly if you're snapping on any kind of control freaks, which you probably wouldn't on the sniper stick because it's already freakishly high. I think we're parked, man. Pre-installed, you do have your four-point D-pad, typical old-school joint, but then you also have this very unique Victrix D-pad, which I have never really been a fan of in comparison to some of the hybrids and wheels that we see from its competitors. To swap any of the accessories, it is freakishly easy. You just get a fingernail up underneath this front faceplate and it pops off. It does have some magnets you'll see on this end. Sure enough, its buddies are on the other end. Also, I will say it looks stellar with the faceplate removed. Obviously, you'd never game with it like this because it actually feels pretty weird with this lip, but it does look cosmetically really neato with that exposed PCB in there. But this is where you're going to be able to change out your thumbstick gates. And if you want to swap out the rear buttons, you just hit this little release clip and it'll boop, pop out like that. Very easy to do one-handed. And as far as swapping the thumbsticks, they're just held on with friction. Get a nice little pinch. And don't twist. Just pinch and pull up straight. Extremely difficult to do one-handed. And then you can see your thumbstick modules peeking out there to say, Hey, buddy, let's play a little game together, shall we? We're going to test these bad boys in GPT or Gamepad Tester in just a few minutes. Reinstalling the rear buttons is also pretty straightforward, but you have these three little tabs, which are going to insert in the little female end, and then you can snap down the bottom end, and it'll snap into place just like that. It seems as if we're missing something, that being a physical instruction manual or quick start guide, but you do have this little scan me QR code, which looks pretty sick. Let's scan it, see where it goes. That is exactly what I was afraid of. Unfortunately, it doesn't take you to any instruction manuals. It just takes you to the landing page for the Victrix family. So you can choose which one you have. And then from there, you can go to software and support and then download the little PDF software <laughs> instruction manual. You shouldn't have to do that though. Cosmetics or appearance is entirely subjective, but I do believe that the Prime is the least attractive out of the entire Victrix family. I honestly think the straight up black and white one looks super sick, especially white with these little plum purple thumbstick bases peeking out. I honestly, I think the white looks the best. And this black variant, especially with the fight pad installed, hello. And then the original wired gambit, which has two face plates. You have a hard plastic one, and then the pre-installed is this silicone rubber joint, which I think looks pretty cool. And then you got Snitch Drop the Dime talking about the Prime over here. The Prime not only looks but also feels very very cheap. The plastics used, other than the fact there's a little patch of silicone or rubber grip, the plastics used just feel completely and utterly cheap. I will say I don't hate this gray. It's kind of a dark, not quite gunmetal or charcoal, but definitely not a light gray. Kind of a midway gray, 50 shades, which looks pretty cool. I do think the purple gambit lettering could, could just fuck off. And then the multicolored face buttons do look tacky, as they are the exact face buttons used in $30 PDP controllers sold in Walmarts. As for ergonomics or comfort, it is literally identical ergonomic-wise to the previous controllers. I will say the plastic used in the back do feel cheaper and also, coincidentally, slipperier, slicker. There is no rubber grips back here, but also absolutely zero stippling dots, lines, grip of any sort. Feels like a goddamn oil slick back here, much like the AIM controllers. If you don't go with the rubber grips, they have like some of the slickest plastic grips rips back here, making this the least comfortable of the Victrix controllers. But shape and shell design, I've always been a fan of the dimensions of this bad boy, and it is not an uncomfortable controller by any means, considering those rear buttons are flush with the rear shell, so it doesn't cut into comfort negatively at all. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 7.5 in the old comfort department. God, that sounds bad. As for the perceived build quality, it is a mixed sack because the D-pad, thumbsticks, and triggers feel pretty darn good, but the face buttons, accessory button suite, so these three bad boys and the home button, and the bumpers sound so hollow and clacky and also just feel not great. The plastics used do not feel good on the old fingertips, which is pretty disappointing. I understand that this is a cost-cutting gambit, but I do believe that a lot of that translates over to the perceived build quality and 
comfort as well because all the surface plastics don't feel very good. Shape and shell design, it's the same as its brothers, but oh, everything else that touches you, boy, <laughs> no sir. And PDP is not going for that minimum wage warranty. They're going a little bit above and beyond the call of duty, so to speak. Now, you know, it's up to you whether or not you want to just do the bare minimum. Which we expect at least a one-year warranty, but we don't always get that. A lot of times we get six-month warranties. We've, we've see, we see that with Hex Gaming. Scuff was doing it for the longest time till about a year ago. They did double it to a year. The Elite Series 2 controller had a three-month warranty for a long time. Now it's a year. I want to read their exclusions and limitations. Hate that. Absolutely hate that. So bought through a third-party resale vendors. Okay, resale. eBay or Craigslist. If, if, that, if that was saying a third-party vendor like Best Buy or Amazon, that's where most people go and buy your controllers. Ain't nobody browsing the PDP website. Unless you're me making a video or something. But any damage from upgrades. So if you tried to bolt on an aftermarket turbocharger, cat back, maybe some coilovers, and now you're scraping on every goddamn speed bunk. Um, that is on you, my brother, and uh, not the mechanic. No, any upgrades, expansions? I don't know what they mean there. I guess the last controller that I can think of that had an expansion was the N64, which had a little expansion port on the back, which was actually a memory chip. Misuse, abuse, slips, trips, falls, neglect, unauthorized modification, watching too many gamer heaven reviews, repair, unauthorized commercial use, esports tallywhacking or operation of the product outside PDP's boring ass missionary position instructions. So what's super surprising and blew my tits back a piece isn't that this is completely broken and no longer spits out juice and steam, but the fact that the D-pad is actually the best in the $80 Prime versus all of the previous versions. Plastics use actually feel pretty good on the fingertips and the actuation is perfect. It does require a little more strength than I'd like, but you get used to it and it feels really nice. Also, there is labeling on there letting you know what functions this D-pad doubles as. We're talking about up and down volume wise for the 3.5 millimeter jack as well as your chat game blend. Not much side to side player wiggle. The D-pad feels phenomenal. Not only the pre-installed four point, but the actuation feels good with this little dish sucker, but the plastics used feel horrendous and they always have. I'm gonna give the D-pad a seven out of 10. As for the face buttons, unfortunately they are the worst of the lot. They do feel noticeably worse than the $100 Gambit from about three years ago. Also, you can see visually, they do stick a little bit farther from the front face plate. Not that that matters at all, just a little cosmetic note. So to not sit here clacking buttons back and forth for like a half hour while you guys think I've lost my last noodle and marble, that saying didn't make any goddamn sense. The facer action buttons on the two interchangeable modular bad boys, which is the wireless Xbox and the wireless PlayStation. Keep in mind there is a white and black variant for both of these suckers. They feel the best, the most secure, most taut. Then come over here to the wired Xbox versions and they feel almost identical, but just ever so shittier in the prime. And I do believe that is due to the plastics. So acoustically, everything rattles around a little bit more in the controller so it's louder something could have been done here to enhance these face buttons over the previous version but i understand this is a uh, the, the, the baseline but i got to give these face buttons a four out of ten they're functional serviceable but they ain't gonna be winning any awards around here as for the accessory button suite it's another one of those categories or parts components that feels very toyish and cheap it's not the lines that i don't necessarily like that does provide a little bit of grip but the plastics use are horrendous and the sound that these bad boys it'll give you not great also this left one is a little bit difficult to hit if you have a high rise stick on there got to kind of reach up and over there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack which is a plus and that is also controllable with this button and the d-pad also the xbox home button has been recycled from so many generic cheap third-party controllers from pdp power a hibbity bibbity it's unfortunate to see this reused so much but i guess it doesn't really matter it's just you, you do press it every time you turn on your console and every time you want to switch games and let me give the accessory button suite a six out of ten salazar slither and i'm speaking the parcel tongue at you as for the thumbsticks or analog sticks the modules underneath this front face plate are potentiometer not hall effect they are susceptible to getting stick drift at any possible time keep in mind you do have that two-year warranty and keep in mind you might be savagely blessed by the controller gods and be damn near invincible immortal when it comes to stick drift you dodge it shuck it jive it at every turn those individuals do exist they do exist it's Timmy's eighth birthday! A big round of applause! He's earned it!
The pre-installed sticks, which I have installed currently, are the short concaves, which I think are the best comfort-wise and also grip-wise. Are They're the ones that I always advise using, but these do have anti-friction rings, so you're going to glide along that. When you're at full lock on the outside of your thumbstick gates, feels very nice. Clicking down L3 and R3, or clicking in the sticks, no cause for concern there. Take them to the PC and see how these bad boys perform in GPT. Interestingly enough, this controller doesn't just work when you plug it in. It is plug and play, but you do still need to hit the Xbox button to power it on. Just like the actual results are hiding over here in this tab for us. And what we're going to see is that it's snapping back to a perfect resting value of 0 0.0000. Is that too many zeros? 0 0.2 across the board on axis is 0, 1, 2, and 3. Also no weird inner or outer dead zone. Great. These look like properly calibrated potentiometer thumbstick modules. How's about one of them old circularity tests? Yep, yep. That them, them there look like some potentiometer thumbstick modules, which are usually between 10 and 16% in the average error rate. But they do look even and there was no cause for concerns gaming on the PC and on the Xbox. Their sticks are it. Bumpers is a super interesting story because the three actuators in these bad boys, I'm pretty sure are identical, but what makes them sound and feel quite a bit different is the acoustics due to the plastics used being cheaper and hollower. Hollowier? You are just making shit up now, my friend. But going back and forth doing the old click test, they do feel identical on all three of these bad boys, sound excluded. But then coming over here to the wired Xbox version, these bumpers are fucking butter. So much better than its competitors. Almost silent, yet tactile, clicky, good amount of resistance. Compress it here, here, doesn't really matter. Yeah, these, these, these are the bomb.com. These, not so much, especially on the Prime. They are some of the worst sounding and feeling bumpers I've used in quite some time. I'm gonna go ahead and give these bad boys a four out of 10, as it's mostly the sound that offends me, but they do work. They're, they're, they're there for me when I need them. They work with the meat or the tip of my fingers, so it's more of just the sound and surface plastics that, that are pissing me off here. Also, cosmetically, they do stick super high off the front of the controller. It looks kind of stupid. A little bit lower over here on this wireless Xbox version. This is using the identical trigger system as all of its comrades, same thing with the rear buttons. So that's really what you're getting here with the Prime is the same rear buttons and same five-way clutch trigger lock system. And that's really the main key notable features that you'd be popping for the Prime 4 when you're penny pinching but you still want them prime ass pro controller features really testing the plosives of that mic so I mentioned these are five way and how they work is you have this little actuator lever so to completely deactivate them to where you have your full linear squeeze go ahead and hold down this lever and then squeeze the trigger release that lever release the trigger sounds complicated it's really not now you get that full squeeze and if you want the most trigger stoppage that fifth stop or lock mode don't press the trigger at all Go ahead and swipe that sucker over. You get a nice little click. Now you have that very short squeeze. It looks a little long on camera, but IRL and actual gameplay, it is actually instantaneous. Keep in mind, it also is backed up by software to where as soon as you sneeze on these puppies, it is registering to the point to where with the Gambit controllers, I actually do not put it in its fifth and final most stop. I actually put it in mode four or else I notice I get a lot of false actuations when I'm just resting my fingers on the triggers, not even applying pressure to them or pressing them in, I'll be either ADSing or shooting. They're too sensitive. So for me, it's mode four, but the clutch trigger lock system has always been lauded on the channel as being one of my favorites. And the fact it's on an $80 controller is wonderful. A nine out of 10. As for the rear buttons, it is actually identical to the previous versions. So if you have watched any of my previous Victrix reviews, which I really hope you have, it is identical. I don't really want to talk too much about it here because I feel like I'd just be blowing the same warm air if that, that same warm took us here but I will link all the reviews for the previous Victrix models in the description below. I'm gonna go ahead and give them an eight out of 10 as they are very tight, quiet, and secure on the Prime, which is quite surprising because the face buttons are hollow and clacky, but luckily you don't even need to diddle with them because you can just rebind or map all those suckers to the Tukis. And they're actually pretty quiet and secure back here. Also a little bit of stippling, kind of a diamond pattern for grip, some Victrix branding, but doesn't really offend me. It's pretty inconspicuous. The two rear buttons, I am not a huge fan of. The plastics feel even cheaper than the four. And it's one huge paddle to where you actuate it up here, down here. It just makes sense for this to be separated into a four rear button design. And that's probably why PDP slash Victrix had the four rear button pre-installed. I'm gonna go ahead and give the system back here an eight out of 10. On the landing page for the Prime, and as you can see, it does use the same application, Victrix Control Hub, which is available on Windows 10 or 11 PCs, as well as Xbox One and series consoles, which I'll be walking you through 
step by step the PC version, but then also using some B-roll showing you that, yep, the Xbox version does work as well. And it's kind of interesting if you click on these pictures, it doesn't take you to the download. You need to come over here to apps and they've got control hub. But what we're looking for is what the hell? Uh, this one over here for the Victrix controllers. I'm really glad PDP decided to not go with a mobile phone application. But since it is wired and you're going to be plugging up to an Xbox or PC anyway, it kind of makes more sense to have a dedicated app like this. Where do you download it for God's sake? You got to scroll down. Boom. There it is. Windows 10 or 11. And it is available in the Windows Store with 2.7 stars from 123 not very satisfied customers between customers are private areas the fuck is going on here hello uh, well i'm gonna have to give it less than 2.7 stars if i can't even install the damn thing there it is jesus are you fucking serious <laughs> the first thing you get greeted with is a little plug to give up your email to marketing i'm gonna go ahead and pass on that and just hit continue you can full screen this application which i like you can also pinch the sides resize it to a custom size customers that is awesome so it actually not only prompts you hey you've got an update available it just starts doing it and now it's rebooting so it was very fast and it happened automatically i have never seen that with any other controller you know what else is great is the fact that you can use both the keyboard and mouse or the controller itself so i'm gonna go ahead and make this full screen for my old eyeballs. I'm going to move myself down there to the corner. So this is the identical application that we're used to, which is a good thing. I liked it back in the day. I like it now. It's a little home screen's a dashboard summary of everything you got going on and all these other tabs. If you didn't get that automatic prompt for the update, come over here, install it that way. Diagnostic, if you're having any issues, you can click begin test. And much like the Xbox accessories app, you just start pressing buttons and it will let you know that everything's working. Now configure is where you're actually going to customize the controller. You can remap all of the buttons of the controller so not just the rear buttons, but everything, the face buttons, D-pad, what shall you? We shall come over here to back buttons and take a look at the fact that you have to select whether you have the two or four rear button installed. It'd be really cool if it just knew what you had installed. That'd be some high tech shit, right? So in order to change them, you're going to highlight whatever button you want. So for me, kind of confusing because I'm looking at it reverse. There we go. Okay. So you press A once to start rebinding and then you press the button that you want bound. So bam, very quick. Bam. Bam, is super fast and efficient. Love that. Mm, unfortunately, you cannot use the bumpers or triggers to tab between these sections. You do need to use the D-pad to select them and then press A to confirm. It'd be cool with a future update if you could also use the bumpers to tab quickly between these. If you have any issues with your analog sticks, you can recalibrate them to potentially counteract stick drift. Oh, that's cosmetically pleasing. <laughs> Let's run that again. So over here in analog stick test, begin test. It gives you a little purple fill-in. Yeah, that's cool. So this is a test for your linear triggers. I do have the clutch triggers in their most stoppiest stop mode, stage five, if you will. So it is stopping everything. And you can test the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is phenomenal. Keep in mind that does have Dolby Atmos support. And in previous Victrix Gambit reviews, I have not only showed you how to engage that within Windows 10 and 11, uh, interestingly enough, because the first Victrix Gambit, I was still on Windows 10. And then the next two ones, I was on 11. So I've showed you how to engage Dolby Atmos in the Windows settings, but also I've showcased a little Dolby Atmos demo on the Dolby Atmos website, but I'm not going to do that anymore because thinking hard on it, that's not really beneficial because you're going to see the sound waves and whatnot, but no matter whether you're watching it through your PC or a headset, it's still not going to reproduce Dolby Atmos through the compression of YouTube and whatnot. But you would be able to hear it by going to that Dolby Atmos demo on their website and using the 3.5 mil jack on any of your Victrix controllers. So rumble and impulse. At first I was thinking rumble, that's some good old fashioned rumble force motors in the palms and then impulse, that's the tinier precision motors and the triggers there is no vibration motors in the triggers running the test here impulse feels like it's in the back and then rumble feels like it's in the front but none of them feel like they're in the triggers and if you jankified anything along the way go ahead and press x to restore to defaults also it's not a press you have to hold it down it fills up that little bubble at the bottom which i think is cool this application not only cosmetically looks really pleasing but everything about it is perfect you can full screen it you can control it with the keyboard and mouse or with the controller it is fast as shit to rebind buttons this is actually my favorite controller application as of now. Getting our first input lag or delay test going b b b wired, obviously. It's only a wired controller. I'm so used to having to test three modes of connectivity, wired and then wireless with a dongle and then Bluetooth. This makes my life so much easier. And what we're going to see here, God damn it, I knew it. I freaking knew it. Four milliseconds of input lag or delay on a 250 hertz stock clock. Now keep in mind, there's seven outliers in there, which are going to be numbers either too big or too too small that don't agree with the rest of its comrades. Scrolling through the numbers manually, you can see clear as day. You ain't gotta be a smart man or woman to see it's four milliseconds, brother. Oh, brother. Now the previous Victrix controllers could be overclocked 
to 1000 hertz. Over here in the Lord of Mice overclocking software in this drop down, go ahead and select all. We are going to be recognized as an Xbox gaming device, not overclocked. Stock clock for around four milliseconds. That's correct. We saw that when running X input test because this is an X input controller. Hold on, let me lubricate my pipes. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Just to make sure this is the right controller, I'm gonna click it and highlight it, then I'm gonna unplug it. Boom, it, it disappeared. What the fuck? Did some other stuff. That was the weirdest thing. I've never experienced that. When I unplugged the controller, it almost acted like another video source, like a monitor or TV, and it made my main monitor go black, and then it fucked with a bunch of my icons on my desktop. But yes, that indeed was the controller. Let's push it to a thousand hertz. Go ahead and unplug, replug. That time it didn't do it, so I guess it was just something else weird with my PC that's even more worrisome. Uh, yes, now we are overclocked at a thousand hertz for around one millisecond of input lag or d d d d d delay. Let's check it out. An X input test and also gamepad LA. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. Huh. thank God. Oh, I was so nervous that I ruined the controller. I forgot every time you plug it back in, you have to hit the home button, turn it back on. Not all wired controllers are like that. Usually you just plug them in and get to down to d d d d damn, that test completed quickly. The computer was receiving that thousand samples extremely fast. We did have four outliers. Let's run a couple more. Let's get quick on these sticks. God damn it, still three outliers, but that is a low number. So yes, this controller is susceptible to being overclocked. Also freakishly consistent here, as you see the minimum and maximum very close to each other, jitter low as shit. These three are what's gonna give you your consistency. That and being able to scroll through the numbers manually and see that they all pretty much agree with each other. And they sure as shit do. Just like everyone in the lobby agrees that you're a freak nasty beast when you have this gamepad in your hand. Overclock this controller if you have it and you play on PC. Now, if you overclock at the PC and then you take it over to the X, box will you still be at one millisecond of input lag or delay no you will not you will be right there at that four but that four is better than the usual eight that you'd be getting wirelessly with xbox wireless something we should all make note of is that the xbox wireless adapter for windows the license official adapter which is the one i recommend using if you want to play wireless <laughs> dry ass throat on PC. That has 16 milliseconds of input lag or delay, which most average gamers still won't even notice. Usually around 30 milliseconds is when people start picking up. Mm, something's going on here. Something's a little slow. 16 milliseconds is pretty goddamn high for a controller. And if you're using that adapter, it's what you're getting on PC. So the final word on the Prime, I absolutely can recommend it. If you want the core pro controller features from the previous Victrix controllers, which sharing my screen are substantially more expensive, about double the price, you have the same rear buttons, which are swappable from two or four. The four is pre-installed for a reason. They, they much more better. You have what is one of the best trigger lock systems in the game with, with the clutch five stage system. And then with an overclock on the PC, you're under one millisecond of input lag or delay at that thousand hertz mark, just a little bit over. It's over 9,000. But having said that, it does also need mention that a lot of the components did noticeably feel cheaper. This is a cheaper controller. Some corners had to be cut and they didn't run off track or anything, but one of the tires was dragging grass and dragging ass a little bit, bringing up some gravel. Things like the bumpers, face buttons, and accessory button suite do sound and feel pretty damn poor. But furthermore than that, I do personally enjoy the convenience factor of being able to go wireless when I'm playing casually on my console in the living room, but then if I want the lowest input lag or delay possible when I'm playing on PC, tether that join up via USB-C cable. And one of the coolest features of the Victrix Gambit was the fact that it was truly modular. They're calling the, I almost called it the core. It kind of does give off the vibes of the Elite 2 core, but the Prime over here, a cheaper version of a previous Pro controller. So yeah, exactly like the Elite core, but the Gambit Prime, it, the front faceplate pops off. As far as being actually modular, like the previous controllers where you can swap between the symmetrical PlayStation sticks or offset Xbox layout or down the road, get replacements for them if you get stick drift or a stuck in face button or d-pad or even dropping in some aftermarket hall effect increased or decreased tension joints and if you play fighting games the fight pad is freaking awesome so i think the prime is a pretty damn sweet controller because you are getting the core what makes the victrix the victrix it's not truly modular it doesn't have the swappable bits so i'm doing with my hands here but yeah at 80 dollars with a two-year warranty under one millisecond of input lag or delay plastics do feel like a goddamn toy who really gives a shit just don't just don't drop it just play with it. It is solid. It is linked in the description below alongside its brethren or sisterin. I can't assign gender to these 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 Victrixes. They're down there. If you want to check them out, drop in the comment section below what you think of these game pads from PDP, the Victrix lineup, or their cheaper controllers. Have you picked up a PDP at a Walmart or Best Buy in the last since you've been alive? I'll see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow.
Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouth pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So molly wop that subscribe button like it owes you money, and we'll have the same amount of fun tomorrow tomorrow.